Sarah Sweeney, John Brady, Lisa Stoney, Susie Quinn, Pamela Gray, Tim Hershey, Brita Burns, Anthony McNamee, Linda Malloy. People I happen to know from my own area whose work I've admired for years. And I'm looking forward to knowing the other artists here who, who are looking at their work and, and enjoying it over the next few weeks. Uh, there hasn't been a, a huge, there, sorry, there has been, always been a great crossover between um, writers and artists. We provoke and stimulate uh, one another. And I suppose as a poet, uh, I thought I should quote uh, a man called John Hewitt, uh, a poet from the north of Ireland, who wrote a poem about a particular colour, uh, and that's the colour of white, which uh, he celebrates in his, in his poem called, which is called, ironically called Colour. <coughs> Moved to the blessing of colour because of the marvellous when, and over the, the clay fleshed ploughlands, the young corn braided green, an image colour for blessing, for blessings the grace, grace of delight, the bud, the leaf, and the blossom, till I rise to the mystery of white. I bless the cloud and the seagull, the blackthorn and hawthorn bless, the lamb and the farmer's daughter in their confirmation dress. <coughs> Um, last summer, uh, I was given an invitation to, to be on the green, to cycle the greenway. Now, I was kind of involved in it to some degree, to a small degree. And so I jumped on a bike anyway down Westport House, and um, we had a sandwich first. And, and uh, by the way, these council junkets now have got very modest altogether. Uh, we seemed to, the last day we were at a thing there, and all we had was a cup of coffee and a scone. <laughs> and I told I said, you know, I wanted to. It was a real dirty day, the tails on flying around the press, and I said, well, I hope you, I won't have any salad now today, please, put on the spuds and bacon and cabbage, keep us warm anyway. But we just got the scone and the coffee, and we're out the door in a half an hour, so uh, I can assure you things have changed in this summer. Uh, but anyway, when, when, we, when we came out in the car park, everybody seemed to have a bike, and everybody seemed to be dressed in bright yellow, uh, like canaries, and there was I, uh, looking as I am now. So. Uh, I kind of reached in my pocket for the bicycle clips <coughs> and uh, off I went down the greenway. But we left at about one o'clock uh, in Westport. I think it was about eight o'clock when we got here from Ireland. We didn't break any speed limits. <laughs> but we were accosted by kegs of beer and Guinness and things like that in tear and there. So it was, it was a difficult challenge. <laughs> um, <coughs> but I was just thinking about that day. When I cycled the old railway track in the summer on, on the opening day, all the history of tragedy lay in front, in front of us. But something that day was banished. The two trains carrying the coffins didn't own the track anymore. For we can't be prisoners of the past. <coughs> We've acknowledged it, of course. But that day, it's as if the old track was being colonized or renamed by a new generation. Something constructive and positive was happening. And the Greenway Arts Initiative movement embodies that momentum. I wish the initi initiative success in tapping into the mo this momentum and all the artists associated with it with plenty of Japanese flags attached. That's red dots, by the way. <laughs> and I wish that, that um, the work will, will walk off the walls, so to speak, because artists do need, do need to let their customs. And uh, therefore, I'd like to declare the exhibition of the